sick of all you sick of fans. Ignorance and miscreants, simpletons and little ants, trying to split their sentience. People peddle pestilence land, pipe on their settlements, and I don't think it was even food for this excrement. Get your head in it, second wind represent white shit. Kid, I never stepped in it. I reckon it's older than the New Testament. Huh, edit it shit. It's better to drink water for why hello there welcome to tech tequila this is the podcast where nerds talk about tech while taking a shot of tequila every 10 minutes i'm your host daniel regueira with me today for the first time i have mr mike caputo hey daniel how's it going what up uh mike real What's quick up? plug where you are from uh i am for from tech 24 tv on youtube boom yeah, Boom. Mike's got a bunch of cool like reviews and like is this worth it to buy type videos. Um, I actually love the ones you did on the iPad Pro because I just got one. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah, you got good shit up. And then also we have with us Miss Jaina Fontenot. Hello, hello. You like how I did your last name there? Yeah, very French. Good job, <laughs> Jaina. Where are you? Where are you here from? I am here from, well, Texas, if you're talking about my geographic Okay, location. if we're going to do but, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I am here from the Pretty Witty Podcast, where me and my co-host, Ash, talk about, you know, politics and culture and current events and global news through the lens of people of color. Sometimes they remind you that Mr. Noodle exists. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that <laughs> upset me. Um, <laughs> anyway... Okay, so I'm going to start off real quick, just talk about what we're drinking. I am drinking a new tequila I have never had. I'm excited to try it. It oh, is called nice. Cimarron. Um, I don't know what that means, even though my Spanish is very good. Uh, <laughs> but I got it from this place that has uh, kind of off-the-beaten-path liquors. And so, yeah, I'm excited to try it. Okay, uh, Jay, what do you have? Well, you remember how I was texting you and telling you I didn't know what I was going <laughs> <Yes>. to get? <laughs> Some tequila just kind of fell into my lap. And by that, I mean, my boss was like, hey, do you want this? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> um, and it is a bottle of Camarena Resposado. Oh, there you go. Well, that's what I'm drinking. Yeah. Camarena's okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it was free and it yeah. came, out of, came out of a cabinet. Can't so complain about free 99. <laughs> Mike, what do you have? I am drinking San Matias de Homa Blanco. Whoa, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds good as fuck. That sounds amazing. It is. Oh, man. <laughs> have you had it before? No. Oh, man. Okay. I'm looking forward to your review of that. What's the price point, just out of curiosity? Is it expensive? 55 Okay. For, for bottle. Gotcha. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. So this week, just guys kind of like a uh, softball getting back into the groove of things. Uh, we're just going to talk about <coughs> what happened in CS, CES this week. Um, yeah. And then Jaina brought something that's not CS, CS related, but it's close enough. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Which is fine. No. I also have one thing that's not CES related that I am looking forward to y'all reacting to. But uh, okay, Mike, let's open up. You brought this. Um, so yeah, let's talk about, I guess this is all about... Um, AirPlay 2 uh, with Samsung, LG, Vizio, Sony, etc. So what's the deal here? Can you break that down? Yeah, sure. So I think historically when you think about Apple and their oh, content distribution. I apologize. I'm so dumb. We're supposed to see how out of practice I am. We're supposed to take a shot. You, I was wondering <laughs> oh. like, okay, well, I guess we're not going to do this right now. Jay, so, next time fine. cut me off. Just <laughs> make it happen. So it's so it's one shot per topic, right? Just make sure. It's one shot every 10 minutes. Not We're going to oh, go. every 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're done talking or not. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So, Mike, since this is your first time and uh, I totally forgot about it, I'm going to let you count down. Countdown? To the shot. Oh, three, two, one. Drink. Boom. <sighs> oh. Okay. Oh, that's Ooh. spicy. Mm. This is pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, wow. Is it good? The San, is it San Matthias? It, yeah, Matthias. It, it is good, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's strong. <laughs> Have a little bit of bite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, timer on. Okay, so yeah, let's hit it. Um, so AirPlay 2 coming this year. Um, to, so the devices are some else. From what I was looking at, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, they're they seem to be like rather pricey TVs. 
Yeah, so the, I mean, they're they're definitely uh, the upper end of the kind of of the, of the product spectrum. When you think of it, uh, it's it's more of the OLED te- uh, televisions that are coming in, like say around the fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar price range right. and up. Uh, but I think what's interesting is that you see Apple partnering with TV manufacturers, where historically they've uh, they've kind of played. Uh, or they've held their content close to the chest, only allowing them to get it or allowing consumers to purchase it from uh, from either you know their phone or from uh, a Apple TV. Right, right, right. Um, so yeah, this is super interesting in terms of like I don't, like like it's it's a completely new uh, it's a shift. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's like a complete shift in what they are are allowing like like content wise on the TV, which is really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I don't know what else to say about it other than like it's an interesting shift in what they're doing. Well, so I think what's you know the, the two two interesting aspects is one, uh, if you were someone who uh, had an iPhone previously, you were the only place that you could buy content was either through your Mac, right, through your iPhone, mm-hmm. uh, right, and or through a Windows PC. So this is really allowing uh, payments or uh. purchase, purchases on in on televisions and. Arguably, these TVs run some variant of uh, Android OS, right? right, or Android TV. Right. So that's that's interesting. Also, the TVs themselves will are will function as an AirPlay uh, an AirPlay speaker, in addition mm-hmm. to a HomeKit, which is their home automation platform uh, accessory. Awesome, and I imagine like also AirPlay, you can like mirror from like your MacBook or your Mac or whatever. So like some mirroring capacity as well. <laughs> Yes. So if you're uh, if you're familiar with their with shortcuts, uh, which is their uh, automation app. So like mm. after these TVs come out, you'll be able to say, "Hey, I don't want to say it loud because I don't yeah. want to." <laughs> like, hey, shlo- hey, hey, Shlomo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Shlo- play Mission Impossible Two on the on the bedroom television, and right. she'll send that request to the TV and turn it on uh, and start playing it. So it's 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 actually kind of like it's like a last mile, so to speak, in terms of. Uh, the components that are in the home. Right, right, right. That's super cool. Um, yeah. I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of home automation things. So even though my TV is a couple years old, uh, this is very interesting to me because I'd like to have a TV where I could do that. Yeah, totally. And that is that not the case with Siri? And um, if you have an Apple TV, can you not do that? No. So you can't send content to the television. Weird. Okay. Huh. Okay. I did not yeah. know that. That's bizarre. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like Chromecast or Amazon or Alexa where you can do that because um, I, I think it's a function of the way that uh, uh, the, uh, the the privacy controls on the television. Oh, weird. Okay, no, I see why that would be the case. Okay, gotcha. But as as soon as AirPlay's built in, then it kind of like breaks down. The, yeah, because Apple has control of that. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, so after that, what I have, um, and Jay, I have it linked if you want to check it out, but one of the things that LG announced was this like portable monitor that's super fucking cool that uh, yeah. is only powered by USB-C. So like, <clears throat> if you have, like I do, the MacBook Pro that has four USB ports, um, oh. uh, you could have like two of these suckers and just power it uh, and plug it in, you know, for the, you know, for as two monitors with just one USB cord, like one USB cord to power and also display shit on it, um, which is wild. Obviously, it would drain the shit out of your your laptop. Yeah. Um, but it's just really cool how I know the idea of like a portable twenty seven inch monitor is kind of weird. Like, it doesn't sound portable, but like the idea right, that <laughs> you can like have one little dock on a desk at somewhere in your office or home, and then have like another little dock somewhere else. Um, and all you need is one cord. It's kind of fucking awesome. Um, that is really cool. And this, I don't want to call it proof of concept, but I think this is, because uh, it's obviously going to be something they're selling, but I think this is kind of like a omen of things to come in terms of um, like not only monitors, but um, just USB-C devices in general. I mean, yeah. We see this with the Switch, which is really cool, even though they have some like proprietary shit going on with the dock that kind of sucks. Um you know, the, the switch itself will still charge with, you know, any USB-C cord. Uh, and so, like, we're starting to see USB-C um, become, a, I guess, a more broadened ecosystem is the wording I'm mm-hmm. looking for. 
Um, More ubiquitous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That. And like the like the capability is finally uh, reaching like what it was promising, which is like, oh, it's a standard. Like it's the one chord for like all the standards. It's so great. Yeah. Um, and we're starting to see it. But like, yeah, use case for this. I would imagine personally, like if I just have like two monitors that I wanted to plug into my desktop and that's assuming my desktop has USB-C. Um, but if it did, and then like, if I want to grab one of them and like move it to the living room and like connect my laptop, like that would be super cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just thought this was yeah. really interesting. I, I think it's really cool. I think there's definitely like uses for it. Like I'm thinking about, you know, the fact that I'm in my house, I, ha I have, like my main computer is a laptop and then I have this giant monitor that I keep in the front room in my house. But, mm -hmm. you know, you don't always want to work in there. You, you know, I move around. I want to go to the living room. I, sometimes I want to work in the kitchen and, you know, watch videos while I cook or recipes or whatever. And like, this makes total sense, especially for moving around your home. Mm -hmm. So... Well, especially exciting. when, like, you want to go to the coffee shop and you need a second. No, I'm just playing. Uh, well, I was kind of thinking that because I'm one of those dorks <laughs> that needs a second monitor and it's like the size of an iPad and it's super annoying because it's actually smaller than your laptop screen. But I wasn't going to say anything because I would look like an ass dragging this around. <laughs> I mean, like, you can do that. So if you have, I think on Windows as well, if you have an iPad, you can, um, it has to be wired, but you can plug in an iPad as a second monitor. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the app? Is it Duet? Yeah, duet. Uh, duet display is pretty cool. I right. when I used it, it was a little laggy. Hmm. Um, so I don't know. I use it as like a secondary to keep Spotify up type of monitor. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Whenever I plug <laughs> just it in, nothing important. Just like you know, you need a second screen. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, this is a, I don't know. This is just kind of like really cool. Um, omen of the future, as it were, uh, which I really like. Um, but yeah, let's see what else we got on here. I like so, that. so in the, in the photo that you're, that you, that's in the link, is it the display that's on the stand or the one that's, uh, the smaller display that's, I guess, adjacent to the computer? It is the one that is, let me double check. So the one the that's to the left of the computer and the one above yep. it are both plugged into the, the MacBook pro in like that video okay. in the article. Um, Oh, I didn't see there was a video. Oh, yeah, there's. yeah, the top. But then, the, yeah, the photo below, it's the same thing where it's like both of these 27-inch um, monitors. Uh, wow. I want, I want to see how quickly it drains the MacBook's battery. <laughs> I imagine like very I'd be fast. curious. Like, yeah. Super fast. Um, but yeah, this is super cool. I nerd out about shit like this as like a designer and like video gamer and shit. Um yeah, this is the kind of shit that excites me to see. Um, yeah. So moving on, we can skip to the Google Assistant install on 1 billion devices. That was an interesting uh, stat that Google threw out there. Uh, my question is, is that including their phones? I would assume so. Yeah, I think it's inclusive of their phones. Yeah. Well, even like the ones that aren't necessarily like Pixel or whatever, the like Samsung ones where they try to kill... <laughs> the Google assistant on it as much as possible. Oh God. Yeah. And it's really not working. <laughs> no, I know. And that's the thing about the Samsung ecosystem. You have like the Google equivalent and the Samsung equivalent. of everything. Yeah. Um, this is still really cool though. I don't know how this compares. I had an article open. How does this compare to, uh, to Alexa's numbers? I'm curious to the echoes numbers. Hmm. Um, Sorry. The, the most recent number that I read was that Alexa was installed. They had it sold a hundred million devices. So mm. it's, okay. it would be 10 X. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, they, there are just far more things that are, you know, Google assistant capable too. So, I mean, Boy. Amazon's really just breaking into that market, but I mean, you know, phone, Google home, newer types of Chromecast, like the, the Google home hub that just came out that connects to your ring video doorbell system that I'm super excited about. Like, yeah, that was super cool. I almost got my mom both of those, but I wasn't trying to spend that much money on Christmas. Yeah, I got her. I got my mom a Galaxy Watch, and then I got myself a Google Home Hub. So, uh, I'm thinking about a second Google Home, but our apartment's not big enough. Like, I can just yell at my Google Home Mini in the kitchen, and she'll hear me <laughs> fine. So I can't justify it. Yeah, I mean, I justify it because I was gonna get um oh, oh what are, what are the name of those really cool um connectable like they're they're bluetooth speakers but they sync to each other so you can put them all, all over the house sonos 
Yes. So I was going to invest in those and they were like, you know, the smallest speakers, like $199. But then I was like, well, what if I just got a bunch of Google Homes that did that? So <laughs> now I have a home hub in the living room. I have one in uh, a regular Google Home in the bedroom and another one in the office. And you kind of get that experience without the, you know, the, the sound isn't fantastic, but you kind of get that experience without the Sonos price point. Yeah. I don't know if y'all heard it, but the shot timer just went off. Um, okay. <laughs> Yay. So that's a thing. Yay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jay, now that uh, we are on the second shot, I believe it is your turn. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, drink. Salud. Ooh. That was better. Mm. Oh, okay. This one's pretty good. Hmm. I'm digging it. This one has a lot more spice than I'm used to in most tequilas. Oh yeah, you said you're drink, drinking that for the first time, huh? Yeah, this one, the cimarron with a with a C, not an S. Mm. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm digging it. Okay, let me start the timer. Okay, go. Okay, so yeah, the um, there was a bunch of smart speakers and whatnot that were announced with Google Assistant. Now. Mike, I assume you know more about this than me, but maybe you don't. So I'm going to feel free to <laughs> tell me you don't know the answer to this. But I thought that part of this announcement was also that um, like, not only is Google allowing uh, other people to use Assistant in their products, but that Google is going to have um, kind of like – it's technically a third party selling it, but it was like they were going to treat it as if it were like first party Google Assistant – Type that where it's like Google Assistant only is sold in this particular product. Am I wording that correctly? I don't know if I'm even explaining the idea right right now. Uh, so I didn't read that uh, read that within the article. I think what uh, mm. what I was referring to, or I could have missed the article, was it was really just about the 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 SVP of the, of, uh, of Assistant uh, talking about how many active installations they had of right. the Assistant running. So really, if you think about it, I mean, if it's on a billion devices or they have a billion installs, I mean, that is a lot of, that's it, just, it's more than iOS or more than Android, it's, it's iOS. Uh, it's a significant number of devices. It's, it's just a real big milestone for the number mm-hmm. of devices. I mean, people are, as an iOS user, I can confidently say that the assistant works better than Siri, you know, 95% of the time. Yeah, of um, course. <laughs> of course. Uh, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it I means it's, it's a big milestone, I think. Have you noticed when you open, I noticed the other day when I opened the Google Assistant app, like once a month, whenever I opened it, uh, that like one of the first things it told me was like, oh, hey, you know that you can set up a Siri shortcut to yeah. <laughs> access Google <laughs> Assistant, which is kind of, you could just tell Siri, hey, Google. Hey, and then it ask Google something yeah. for me? God. Oh, shit. Apologies for setting off <laughs> right. not only my Google Home, but other people's Google Homes. Um, uh, yeah, which is interesting. So it's like, hey, Siri, <laughs> like. Hey Siri, can you call Activate. me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, you can do that now. So, and then but, I'm looking at, there's just a bunch of products announced that have like assistant integration in them. Yeah. Um, including cars, apparently? Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I feel like that's the last frontier before we get ridiculous. Um, <laughs> like, I, what fridge was that that had... Um, like Google Assistant technology or they were thinking about it. And I was like, what do I need that in the fridge for? Yeah. Especially if you have like a Google home, like you're good. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the fridges that have like the, the giant tablet on them. I don't get. Yeah. For social media. I'm getting milk. Oh yeah. <laughs> the tweet. In college, there was a fridge, uh, at, um, Mike, we, we all went to university of Texas. And so, you, UT uh, Austin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. That's the one. And uh, they're in in Bevo on the fourth floor, or not Bevo? Sorry, in the <laughs> like um, what? in the cow Bevo. No, in <laughs> in um shit. What's the name? I fucking majored communications. I can't remember the new fucking. Oh, the new Moody. Moody, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The new the new fucking building. Anyway, um, on the fourth floor they had a fridge that could tweet, and someone made a handle for it that was like fourth floor fridge or something that's awesome and just people are just tweeting stupid shit but yeah the so back to assistant though there was a bunch of let me see like a, a yeah. bunch of smart speakers that were announced with mm-hmm. assistant integration now i think like let's see sonos what else there's this weird wooden one 
House of Marley. I have not heard of this brand. I have not. Yeah. Um, there's some smart displays. One of the smart displays I really liked that looks a lot like the Google Home Hub is the Lenovo Smart Clock. Yeah, that's um, cool. I have not seen that. It's, it's pretty cute. I wonder... Um, I need to look into it. I don't know if the functionality is the same <clears throat> exact as the Google Home Hub, though. Um, like, I don't know if it's better to get, like, a first-party Google device as your, you know, as, like, a device for your home uh, versus, like, one of these with just Google Assistant integrated. Like, I don't know if there's a difference in well, terms the, of, like, functionality. There's probably some some APIs that Google, or some functionality that Google limits to their own first-party hardware. Right. That's what I would assume. Mm. Yeah. As I would I would assume that as well. Yeah, um, I need to look into that because I'm not sure, but I I think it might be safe to assume that. But I like the way this looks more than the hub personally, and it's cheaper. <laughs> it's like half the price. <laughs> um, uh, so wait, I'm sorry. Cool. How, how much is the Leno- the Lenovo Spark Black? It's eighty. 80 bucks. Yeah, I'm looking at it on the Verge, and it's seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I was I was able to find the home hub during the holidays for seventy five bucks. Oof. Probably, what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Uh, that was like one forty nine. Yeah, I bought it. Actually, I bought two of them at seventy five. Um, oh shit! And I think right now it's ninety nine at. Oh gosh, the name escaped me. I forgot. Uh, I'll, like I'll, Best Buy, maybe. No, it's not Best Buy. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. Is it online somewhere? It was online. I think it's B and H. Actually, B and H. Oh, uh, B&H okay. is always doing cheap shit. <laughs> yeah. So the, the other thing that was really, uh, I think, impressive about the number of devices or the number of uh, installations is that they also have 30 languages, All right. So Google, right. You, can, you can now do interpreter or uh, you can now do language translation in 30 languages. And there's now a new mode to do uh, real-time language translation, which is actually very impressive. It's almost yeah. like the Google Pixel Buds. Remember, if you remember those from the Pixel Two launch, they uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they had those smart uh, smart headphones that did real time translation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I've heard that there's like some bugs working out, but that's always how it is with Google, where like they'll unveil something and it's a little exactly. buggy. And with translation, like it's bound to be you know a little off at some point. But it's yeah. one of those things where they Google are like the masters of like incremental updates to make things yeah. better uh, within the life of a product. They do that shit yeah. all the time. Um, for better or worse, I find that shit kind of annoying sometimes when I had a, a pixel phone. Um, yeah. that's super cool though. There's apparently, wait, there's a section here that I'm looking at. It says voice assistance for your bathroom. Kohler, like the, the, what? the faucet brand. Yes. Is it, why? What? Oh, it's a toilet. It's a, <laughs> what? Okay. Compatible Explain. with Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'd wait. What? And voice controlled mirror? I'm so confused. Why is it a voice? Co- I guess for the lights. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see the voice controlled mirror better than I can understand the voice controlled toilet. If that helps. <laughs> hey, so and so, please clean my ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> please turn on bidet. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's weird. Oh, man. There's a lot of like CES is like the you know the home of like things that don't need Alexa or you know assistant integration. Like there's just a bunch of stuff that you're like, why? Why? Yeah, like we yeah. we could like it's possible, but is it necessary? No. But <laughs> I, I think generally talking about assistant versus Alexa, like this year there seems to be more products integrated with assistant than last year. I think last year there weren't too many, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, I think there was like a, a moment at which everybody was wondering, like, okay, are people actually going to start buying these, and is it going to pick up? And then now it's like, okay, yeah, this is a thing, and we all, like, we all have one, you know? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's a function of how developed or how mature Google, ha- you know, Google support was for the home products. Like, there's some things that you that I've noticed that I can't do using the home uh, using the assistant versus uh, home kit. Like, I, you know, I, mm-hmm. I can't I can't actually lock the door using assistant where I can do that on home kit uh, on home kit. Yeah, I have not used home kit, but I've heard home kit is a lot better with um, with stuff like that uh, that are like like the like house based commands. Yep. Um, and I'm not familiar with it, so I don't know. But it does sound. I don't know, like more, I guess, robust is the robust. word? Robust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which is awesome. Wait, so you have like automated like a, like a deadlock or something? Yeah, we have. Uh, I think we have like some like twenty five lights. Uh, something. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. My my wife my wife hates it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have like 25 lights. Uh, we have the thermostat, the deadlocks, fans. She's like, this is ridiculous. Oh, that's kind of awesome. I kind of want kinda, my fans yeah, like them. For sure. Yeah. So I, 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 I think it's really cool, but she, she doesn't like it. She, she, <laughs> I'm she, super into it. She's like, awesome. wait, she told me the other day. She's like, she's like, Hey Google. Hey Siri. Hey Google. Hey Siri. I don't know which one to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so funny. Does that like do do you use um auto voice? Cuz like you know how auto voice lets you uh program your own voice commands to Google Home. Do you use that to to do those things or is it all integrated with Google already and it just it connects that way? Uh whoops, sorry. It actually turned on my my Pixel phone. Um so what you uh, <laughs> what you Hold on. Uh, you you would first do the authentication or the authorization. So you just say, you know, uh, you go through the list of home providers or the accessories. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. What is that? That's the shot timer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why is the... it roaring? <laughs> it's yeah, from... that's serious. So, uh, yeah, I had a uh, – not I. Eric, friend of the podcast. I don't want to say pod because the pod safe people say that. A friend of this podcast of the show. Uh, friend that of the show. y'all have been on, yeah, um, suggested that be the shot timer sound. It's from uh, Breath of the Wild. It's the Blood Moon sound. Um, I don't even know what that is. Great subject. <laughs> it's uh, like oh, in, I don't even know how to explain it if you haven't played <laughs> Breath of the Wild. There's okay. this thing that happens that's super annoying in Breath of the Wild called the Blood Moon, where like all the oh. things that you killed in Legend of Zelda like just revive themselves. Is this oh. on? Okay, that makes sense. This now. is the Switch one. Switch, okay, yeah, I don't have a Switch. Yeah, it's the new <clears> one. <throat> um, okay, if y'all are ready, I can count down. All sure. right, go for it. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> Salud. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Woo. All right. But yeah, I don't know what else to say. I don't know. Assistance in oh. a lot of shit. It looks cool. Yeah. I love it. So you were asking about the integration. So you go into yeah. the you go into the home app on your iPhone awesome. or Android phone. Yep. And you basically just say which home accessory you want to uh, connect it to, and then once you do the authentication with your password, mm-hmm. it just works. You'll say, hey, you know, show me the show me the nursery camera, turn on the bedroom light because you would have already named those accessories in a right. you know, right. previously. Yeah. I mean, I guess I didn't know that there were so many, like you were saying, well, I, I guess the ceiling fan is connected to the light. So that makes sense. Um, but there are so many things now that are connected. I was really just thinking of like nest and, you know, lights, but there are so many things now that can connect. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you kind of step back and think about Nest product line, they have more than just you know they have the thermostat, they have the cameras, they have the doorbell, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, smoke detectors, and the carbon monoxide detectors. So they have a pretty you know they have you know five or six products out. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just got the light that I was playing with when when we were still on camera. Um, that is just like a knockoff, like a cheap knockoff of a Philips that was like. 15 bucks of the Philips Hue. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, really? I've been waiting for something that's not as expensive as Philips Hue, and I'm trying to convince my girlfriend to let me put it. Or do I have to say fiance? Is I that think a word you I do. Like, you don't. If, if you put a ring on it, you do. If you, yeah. Yeah. If you put a ring on it, yeah, you have to say fiance. Oh, that's such a weird word. I mean, <laughs> um, my fiance won't. Yeah, there, uh, there you go. Good job. Would you she's like, not. Nah. You don't have to say it like that. What if I do every time? I just put a. <laughs> Yeah, you can add it to your, to your whole okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's like not into putting it into our living room and I was like, okay, I'm gonna like pilot it in like the computer room and she'll be into it and then I'll <laughs> I can later put it over there. Um, <laughs> pilot. Yeah, this is like yeah, this is the pilot. It's <laughs> yeah. over here in yeah, the computer in the room. Computer. She was messing with me earlier and like changing the colors on me with the Google Home. Um that was fun. Uh Okay, so that's the thing. One of the things I wanted to bring up, another monitor that's super cool. I didn't link it in the doc, so I guess I'll link it in the Hangouts for y'all to see real quick. Yeah. Um, but there's this monitor that Samsung came out with called, what do they call it? The Samsung Space? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Space. 
Um, and this is like, I'm surprised that monitor stands don't do this already. Mm -hmm. Um, the monitor stand I have is like a rod that kind of holds the cables along it. So you can still see the cables, but nothing like this that can hold it like flush along a wall, which is what I want for like the most space I can get on a desk. Um, and this is awesome. I want yeah. this. It's kind of like a like a VESA mount or VESA mount. I'm not sure. How you yeah, yeah. No, I have a, yeah, I have a VESA mount that's like it's meant for two monitors, and it goes either way. Like it goes both ways. You know, by both ways, I mean it goes out. Not that it's bisexual. I mean that it goes in both directions <laughs> from the the main like <clears throat> stick coming up from the, the desk. Uh, but it's not as flexible as I'd like it to be. Um, not that this one looks flexible, but it looks very minimalist, which I love. Yeah. Um, being the designer nerd that I am, um, it looks super minimalist and I'm super into it. If there were like a dual monitor solution that were like this, I would get it in a heartbeat. The one I have right now is the best I could find. Mm. Um, but this is really cool. It's nothing like groundbreaking, but I thought it was fun and something that I would like personally. Um, yeah, I'm super into like minimalist displays. So this was cool. Um, let me see what else was there. Oh, oh Jay, there was a thing I, I brought up in the beginning that mm -hmm. was, uh, the, the TV that can like roll. So, th so yeah, one of the things that, uh, I don't know if it premiered here per se, but it kind of like came into its mm -hmm. own in some of the products that it displayed here, um, is foldable screens. Like there's a foldable phone yeah, and then there's a TV, like an OLED TV, 4k OLED. Up. That can fucking roll up. Um, did I put the link in the doc? No. No, I'm but I'm looking all... at it on Google's top stories. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I also linked it in the Hangouts if it helps. Um, and there's some GIFs of it in that article. Uh, I don't see a use case for this. It's, I mean, like, it's cool it, from, like, a technological standpoint. But, like, this seems like something cool for the sake of cool and not cool for like a use. I can't really, I don't know. I can't really think I of mean, yeah. a reason. Well, uh, no. Yeah. I was going to try. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> like if it's like, I, I can't really think of it. If you need something portable, you might get like a projector. Right. Well, uh, or like, I don't know. Why do you need a portable 4K OLED TV, though? Like, Well, maybe you have super judgmental family who doesn't like TV in the bedroom or whatever. So you have it, and then when they come over, you roll it up and put it in the closet. <laughs> the problem sounds like your family. Anyway. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah, I can't think of a use case for this. I saw this, and I was like, that's interesting, but why? Yeah. I mean, some um, of those things are so cool, though, like... You know, things that have no purpose. Like, I'm still thinking about this talking toilet. Like, I'm... <laughs> you know, if I had... And that's, according like, to my friends who have visited Japan, like, that's a thing. Yeah. It is a thing. It's a, yeah, it's a thing. Like, why, though? I don't... Mm. Yeah, no, I'm good. This this is so odd. I don't know. Mike, do you have anything to say? I have nothing to say about this other than why. <laughs> so I think that the interesting part is where it will the TV will roll down, excuse me, will roll down to a smaller aspect ratio or smaller size. And you can think about if you were watching a movie that was shot in a different aspect ratio oh, other than cinematic. Yeah. So you could actually then uh, possibly match the match the aspect ratio of the TV to the movie. Uh, other right. than that, you I think when it's in this uh, this like docked position uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, there is a display, or the display acts kind of as a information center, where it can like tell you the temperature and things like that. Uh, but other than that, no, it looks like a very expensive toy. Yeah, like I don't know. I do like the the like display of like uh, I don't even know. It's just playing a song, so it's just like showing like the top, I guess, like eighth of the television as it plays a song. Yeah, which is like fun, but like. I don't know. This it, it it sounds like a solution seeking for a problem. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm sure there will be some application of this technology that is genuinely useful. Problem solving. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was thinking about <clears throat> when I was working in education and how often you would find yourself needing a screen and not having a screen. <laughs> so yeah. like things like that, uh, it would make a lot of sense for like education. Um, what if like yeah. your smart board could do <laughs> just roll up? Yes. 
or I mean, maybe it's you know the next application is not necessarily in the stand, but maybe it's somewhere like in your bedroom, right? Like on a on a, de- yeah. a desk or a nightstand. Yeah, like if you could have like a nice uh, dock or something yeah. that you can prop it on or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure the technology of, I guess, rollable LED or OLED in this case um, will be used for something. At least I hope so. Otherwise, it just kind of <laughs> something cool that happened. Yeah. 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 Something marginally cool. <laughs> I don't know. So that's a thing. Um, it's a thing. What? <laughs> it's a thing that happened. I don't know how to yeah. feel about it. <laughs> there was the foldable phone. I didn't really look at that. Mike, did you look at that at all? I did look at it and I was disgusted. I looked at it and I didn't. <laughs> yeah. No. It, it, just, like, it just looks like crap. And it feels, it feels like the most like half – baked yeah. half baked isn't even the right phrase but like right. half baked version of the shit that they have in westworld like the little <clears throat> folding tablet yeah screen thingy um it was I like no like two like two hardware developers got like they're just making a joke and all of a sudden someone thought they could really do it and they, yeah. should, they, they brought it to see yes yeah it yeah. was like they were all in a conference room and they were like hey do you remember the motorola razor what if it was drunk and like that's <laughs> That's what this is. Like looking yeah. at it, it just looks droopy and sad. Let's make it Blade Runnery and right. then make it drunk. Yes, <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know how to feel about that. And it, yeah, it just it hurts my feelings that that because I've had um I'm a Samsung Galaxy nerd. Like I've had had every Galaxy since the first one, and the fact that this is the Galaxy, like it could land um, on the Galaxy Ten like this, just makes Oof. me uncomfortable. Yeah, the, uh, that's like a bye. Yeah, I have to find something else to do with myself. This is like not goodbye. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Jay, you wanted to talk about this caller verification thing. Yeah. So, so go. Kind of like uh, I think T-Mobile just kind of used <laughs> just kind of used CES to make an announcement, which is kind of how I'm using this to make an announcement. <laughs> oh, so this was CES related, and I was wrong. Sort of. I mean, not really. But um, they just used this opportunity because they're rolling out this new caller verified feature. So you know how spam callers can um, spoof something <coughs> in your area code to make it look familiar, and then they call you, and then you answer because you think it's just you know some cousin whose number you didn't save, and it turns right. out to be somebody trying to sell you insurance. Yes. Well, <laughs> they um, T-Mobile's rolling out. They're just going to start it with the Galaxy Note 9, and then roll it out to, you know, things that are purchased from T-Mobile stores after that. But it's basically a caller verification that happens when, like, with your caller ID. So it'll tell you whether or not a caller is verified when it shows up on your phone. So you can choose Mm. to ignore slash block or answer. And it's supposed to eventually filter out all of these things that are spammers uh, and scammers and spoofers and, and all of those things. Um, and it's like the implementation of the stir and shaken standard. So I'm really excited about the, it. The what a what a what? Stir and shaken? What is that? Oh. Yeah, they're like the the standards for. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going to pour this. And you're going to explain what. What did you say? Stir, stir, stir and, and shake. Like shaken, not stirred. Stir and shaken. So um, I, don't, I don't know like way too much about it. But basically. It's the it's the standard by which they it's like the like a use case scenario for how they determine whether or not something is probably a spoofed call. So oh. they're using these rules to um, just kind of apply to every call so that and, and it's, you know, in beta right now. But I'm really excited mm-hmm. about it. At the beginning of this year, you know how you, you know, at your job, you register for new uh, health insurance for the year coming. Mm-hmm. Well, I accidentally hmm. declined health and took everything else. Dental, vision, beneficiary, <laughs> like, you know, death and dismember. Like, I had everything except <laughs> health insurance. And it was like a $500 mistake because I had to fix it after the first. Yeah. But um, for those two, like, two or three days that I didn't have health insurance, I got, out, like, so many spoof calls from mm. things that had my area code trying to sell me, like, some fake health insurance thing. Um, so I'm just I'm really excited about this because mm. I get like way too many of those calls. That's crazy. I mean, I get, I get so many of those every week. I get at least like one a day, but also, um, I remember when I was on the pixel, the pixel has something similar where like it has a suspected spam quote unquote thing show up on your phone. 
Yeah. And we, like, T-Mobile has that now as well, where um, mm. it has the caller ID function that's, like, possible scammer or something like that. Gotcha. Um, but this is just, like, an extra level of security, and then it, it will <clears throat> eventually block those calls without you having to, you know, physically take that action and yeah. block it. Oh. Interesting. Good. So that's the pic- cool. The Pixel in Google, they're doing it through crowdsourcing? And that's, that's how I it's have been working. no idea how they do it. All I know yeah. is that sometimes when I got phone calls uh, that were numbers I didn't have registered, it would like be the whole screen was red and was like suspected spam. Do not yeah, pick up. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's wow. what mine does. Okay, so it's not just the Pixel. It's like yeah, all, I mean, all it, Android yeah. phones. Yeah, I think it's all like uh, Android phones. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure if it was Pixel only or all of them. But yeah, that um, is a feature I miss, although I've just gotten accustomed to not picking up. <clears throat> right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mine says scam likely. (laughs) (laughs) That's the caller ID phone. (laughs) Scam likely. So, yeah. Okay, let's take the shot. Mike, it's your turn to count. All right. right. Girl, you got to get ready. Sorry, I forgot we did this, that the thing went off. (laughs) I forgot that alcohol was part of this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, got some on my face. Um... (laughs) That's where it goes. That's exactly where it goes. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So I wanted one of the things that was announced at CES, CES and um, that I, I heard about it. Uh, I was listening to the Vergecast earlier today to try to um, get up on what had happened this week. And one of the things they brought up. And I started looking into it. Is this little uh, robot thing called Bo- Boko Emo? Um, mm-hmm. And so I believe it's by a Japanese company. Yeah, y- Yukai Entertaining or Engineering. Sorry, um, but it's spelled B O C C O and then Emo. And the Emo is supposed to be like em- emotion, emotional. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so the idea is, this is really weird. I can't tell if it's cute or creepy. I'm going to link y'all here in the Hangouts so you can see. Oh, um, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Um, it's <laughs> it's so weird. It's so it's it, the, the intent of this thing is, is basically to keep tabs on like your child or your aging parents. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. But so it's like whenever you walk into a room and like express feelings, uh, like say phrases that are like, I feel good or stuff like that. Um, it'll like shake its head and have like green lights in its cheeks and be like, okay, good. And then it'll like text your like caretaker. So like, you know, it, I guess us in the instance of either our children or our parents. Hmm. Um, and you kind of like put it in, you know, the kitchen or living room or something. And it'll like detect when like doors open and stuff. And the idea is like, it's just this like cute thing that you keep in their room to like keep like, like uh, just, just keep up on your family. Um <clears throat> And I, I, I'm so confused. Like I don't know what to think about this. Oh, it's a Furby. I mean, like a useful th- th- Furby, like a, like useful, a more useful Furby. Maybe, yeah. Like questionably more useful. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. I, don't like, I really don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that could go either way, right? Like if you had a ten-year-old that was really into stuff like this because they watch way too many Disney movies and they wish they had a bird that talked to them but like this mm-hmm. could be cute um but i'm not I, sure it talks it, i oh, it, it might talk. i'm not sure well it chirps i'm like reading all oh the there you go that it chirps so there you go um yeah i don't know it we'll see i think this is this might not be like an american thing and then i, I this I, is I just, weird i just can't wrap my brain around it yeah, this might make more sense in like the Japanese context. I think it makes more sense instead of like in the children uh, use case. It makes more sense in like the geriatrical person use case. Or, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like you know, Japan, you Japan has the oh sorry. Oh, like the hot the highest age population. Yeah, the, they have oh, the largest else? population of of elderly people in the world. Yeah. Uh, so I guess or it Jared. does make sense for like keeping up with with them. Um, it's it's just so weird. Yeah, that's the one context where I see it being useful. And even then, it is it is an odd way to keep up with the old person. But I guess it is a way that's cutesy. Um, and the Japanese love cutesy shit. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just, like, unsure about it 
because it the the functions seem like very few and far between and yeah. i don't like, know reading this description that says that it can you know if you use words like tired it'll put its head down and make a sad whining noise and that would just right. make me sad uh because it feels like i'm making something else stressed out because i'm stressed out even though it's not a real living thing i don't know it was okay <laughs> it just bother me Piggybacking off that sentiment, I want to link another robot okay. that I saw called the – okay, so I guess it's supposed to be pronounced like robot. The the love ot. Okay, I'm going to link it here in the Hangouts for okay. you all to see again. Um, I, I don't know. So it's, this guy just kind of roves around your home asking for attention like a pet. And <laughs> it has like a camera on its head. And it's just like, hug me and give me attention and stuff. And <laughs> – it um i think that's all it does but it recognizes like up to several hundred people apparently and so like if you don't treat it well it'll like seek other people and like shun you um and i i don't this is one i don't even know how to feel about like more so than the last one <laughs> it's so weird oh. it's so bizarre <laughs> like it's so we i'm so I, I, I feel like I have questions, but I don't. I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm wow. more like in awe. Yeah, I don't know what to make of, of this. So for those of you listening and you're not able to Google it, it looks like the, a cross between – I mean, it's a stuffed animal on wheels with a camera on its head, which is really weird. But the, the stuffed creature itself – and digitalized, which is also weird. Yeah. But the creature itself looks like a cross between like a sloth, sloth? and yeah. a penguin. Yeah. Or like it is sloth like a mammalian, it is, yes. but like it, like the body form is penguin like. Yeah, it's like. Um, do you? Um, this may have been super niche, but you remember like in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, Disney came out with those pukaloos that were like really minimalistic versions of their main characters. This is what that looks like, but but larger. Wait, with what? Pukaloos. You, do I, you remember those? No. You made that up. What is I that? did not. Okay, so P O O K A. P O O K A. L O O Z. Wait, I wasn't typing. I was just typing into the ether. Okay. <laughs> Pookaloos. They're these like Disney stuffed animal oh, characters. They're super minimalist. I hate um, the spelling. And they're like a zillion of them. Oh, it's like Beanie Babies, but Disney shit. Right, yeah. It just like reminds me of that. Yeah, this is creepy. It but really does. Camera. Oh God, the Pukaloo's Woody is terrible. This is Isn't awful. He? <laughs> I'm closing this. It's the worst. <laughs> um, it's genuinely horrifying. You're welcome for that. Um, so these these Lovats, their eyes are digital, which is also real weird. Oh, kind of like, weird have y'all seen like the new 2.0 or 3.0, whatever version it is, the most recent one, Furbies with digital eyes? Um, your silence no. tells me no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they brought Furbies back and they have digital eyes and it's the worst thing ever. These have digital eyes that are really high def um, and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't... it's a no for me. I know. It's so weird. It... <laughs> wow, this is $3,000? I... Yes. <laughs> it is so expensive. Oh, I don't, I don't understand. I don't. Is it for people it. that are allergic to dogs and they want to know what a, having a dog is like? I'm, this I'm is, really this is the same this company that like one or two CESs ago, they had cam come out with, I think this is the same company at least, The there was like a cat pillow where it was like effectively a pillow whose body was, or sorry, a cat whose body was a pillow with missing the head, but it had a tail. And so you would like cuddle it and it would like make sounds and like move the tail. Oh no! And, and make like cat sounds. Yeah, that's the proper reaction. No. Uh, <laughs> like, no. like okay, no. <laughs> I I don't. Mm. I don't. I just don't. Yeah, this is. I, don't. I am. I am not very often at a loss for words, but I don't have any right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, ooh, that's creepy. Like I watched the video not long before getting on the call with y'all, and I, I like I was a little silent in the beginning of the call just because I was spooked by this thing. Um, there's a somewhat dim photo with the light up with the backlit eyes, the digital eyes, and uh, it's gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> I don't know, Mike. Do you have feelings? <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's just very strange. 
<laughs> I, I still can't get over it costs three thousand dollars. But I'm not in the market for a digital robot, so maybe I think it's expensive. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like it costs three thousand dollars to be haunted by. Right. <laughs> Remember, like in the '90s, there was this remote control robot that I had got for my birthday that was like a hundred, a hundred fifty bucks, and um, you know, it could like rove around the home, and then like in the remote control, you can talk into it, and it would be like a walkie-talkie. Um, that's like infinitely more. I feel like I got way more out of that than I could get out of this thing. Yeah. This is effectively a Furby that can chase you down yeah. and like ask for hugs and shit, um, and not as ugly. It's a less ugly Furby. Yeah, this is this is gonna like feed the imaginations of the people who will create the best horror movies of the next generation. <laughs> this is gonna be a Black Mirror episode because <laughs> again, those of you listening, it has. And, and this is again for it to recognize the I don't know how many hundreds of people it can recognize. I forget, um, but it has like just this camera that's about a half to maybe even a third the length of its head on top of its head. So it's like. A Teletubby antenna, but it's really large and it's a camera. So it feels like, I don't know, it feels like this Big Brother toy that was given to you. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm very against this. I bet the $3,000 was just for that damn camera technology and recognizing people. Hmm. That's so weird. <laughs> this is, there's so much like bizarre shit that happens at CES. Um, and this is no exception. I really don't know what to say about it, but I'm just going to keep ranting. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I really don't know. Um anyway, I guess I guess moving on. Uh so I want to get y'all's reaction um there's this thing I put in the doc. So both of you go to the doc. When you're ready, I want you to click at the same time. I want this to be an interactive experience okay. for both of you. <laughs> So when you're ready to click to click on the LOL, let each other know and just go for uh shit. It's shot time. Oh, okay, well let's do that first. Fuck. That okay. is really disruptive to my peace. <laughs> you know, this podcast is not meant for your peace. <laughs> that is the truth. I don't okay. think tequila is meant for peace. I don't think it is either. It's like the least peaceful. Hard liquor yeah. Is. yeah. I don't think any hard liquor is peaceful, but tequila is probably the least. Probably, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm ready. Um, Jay, I think it's your turn. Okay. Um, here we go. Three, two, one, drink. Boom. Salud. Woo. This is pretty good. Mike, how's the, the San Matias that you're drinking? <clears throat> it's actually much better than the first drink I had. Sorry, the first sip that I had. Yeah. I first mean, one. I think like inebriated helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does. Everything gets a little easier. I'm looking this shit up because like all tequilas that I've had north of the like $40 mark are pretty fucking good. Mm. Um, like one of the three or four that I've had was the, the George Clooney one, the um, Casa Amigos. And I had that one. Casa that Amigos. Was good. Is, it's solid. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. The San Matias is the same price range as the, as the Casa Amigos. So I might look into that. Um, okay. So when y'all are ready, okay. uh, I guess like let each other know and click the LOL. Cause this is some shit that's hilarious. All right. All right I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready, too. Three, two, Three, one. Two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I, I, I forget where I saw this. I saw this somewhere. Yeah, please look at the photos. Okay, so for those of you, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna link this into the description. So for those of you who want to experience the surprise at the same time as Jana and Michael, I, I just called you Michael. I hope you're okay with that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, so this, uh, God damn it, this this is the headline is Russia's most modern robot revealed to just be a person in a suit, uh, and they have like a whole like. Like fucking like Samsung revealed TED Talk ass stage where this robot is on stage. 
And oh god, it's so funny. This if is you scroll, very Russian. <laughs> This is so good. If you scroll down, there's a photo of like kids interacting with it, and you can very much see into the back of the neck, and there's like a a dude, like in it. I don't. I don't have words. I'm gonna translate the Russian in this tweet just to see what the deal is. Um, Yeah, this is hilarious. (laughs) I'm sorry. This is this is really funny. I can't stop. (laughs) (laughs) Insane. Okay. Oh, this is from a while ago, but I, I had to share it with someone. <laughs> you know, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. I just, this is one of those situations where it's like you're doing something stupid and you think that other people are stupid and won't notice the stupid thing you're doing. And we did notice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have y'all, did y'all see the tweet towards the bottom of the article? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What does it okay, say? Okay, so I translated it. It's uh, the first day of the forum, quote unquote, projector opened six copyright lessons of the best teachers of Russia. So it's a perfectly serious tweet, even though you can see the man in the fucking suit. Right. (laughs) And it doesn't, like, forgive me for being a snob, but it doesn't look very technologically advanced. It looks like it's made out of a bath toy or something. (laughs) (laughs) Like... Did anybody ever really think this was seriously a robot? Like, you can see a human neck. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a dude cosplaying as, like, Daft Punk's long-lost cousin right, or something. Like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's like Big Hero 6's weird cousin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Big Loser uh, 6. Uh, so oh. yeah, I thought I thought it'd be a good idea to, for, to like while we're talking about CSS that to be like. Meanwhile, funny. in Russia, this is happening. Yeah. That's funny. Oh my god. Meanwhile, wonder, in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> in Soviet Russia, a robot is just a human. <laughs> a robot is guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. This is hilarious. I love this. Um, so good. Uh, I yeah, haven't left much... at something Russia did in a long time. Thank you. <laughs> but, and right. I'm sure that, like, the Russian news media, uh, you know, is, like, mad controlled by the government and shit over there. Yeah. Like, I would not doubt if, like, in the mainstream media that it has not gotten out that that was just a dude in a suit. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, man. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's so funny. It's so good. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Um, it, the it last is, thing it, it, it is good, go but it, think about it. It's, it's actually a little sad if, if they don't know that this is. So, you know I mean, they're just so um, they don't have access to current information that they think it's a, this is real. Oh, I know. I'm sure like there's some minority of people that do um, that have access yeah. to uh, whether it's like dissenting. Yeah, I, I know there's like one or two dissenting news outlets there that are like heavily um, monitored and like the. The guy who was the owner of one of them uh, had, I'm just going to like nerd out for a second. Um, so I was watching, uh, this is before he committed suicide, but while I was watching Anthony Bourdain's um, Parts Unknown, and there's one in Russia, and he has a dinner with this opposition guy, opposition to Putin, that is. Um, and this guy owns like one of the opposition media Uh, companies in the country and that same guy in i think it was 2016 was like straight up murked by uh some people who were absolutely putin's thugs in the red square and putin the next day blamed it on chechnyans um so yeah shit is crazy over there it's wild absolutely insane um so I don't know who, like, what happened to that news outlet. I think it might still exist. But, um, yeah, Russia's fucking insane. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I just can't get over this. I mean, wow. It's so funny. It's so great. It. I, I forget where I saw it. It might have been, like, Reddit or maybe it was Flipboard or something. But I lost my shit when I saw it. <laughs> and I was like, I have to talk about this on the podcast. This is amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, okay, so smooth transition back into CES mode. <laughs> Apparently, at CES, 
Um, I didn't realize, I saw there was a lot of buzz around it, but I didn't realize it was because of CES. Um, the Impossible Burger, many of you might be familiar with it, apparently announced their 2.0 version of the product. Um, and I've had the the regular version a lot just because I personally have stopped eating beef since like a year and a half ago-ish. Um, and by eating, I mean like not purchasing it. I'll still eat it if people give it to me, but I'm not trying to like put my money into beef for like environmental reasons. But um, the Impossible Burger was already a pretty good beef emulation, but this one... I'll link y'all uh, here from Futurism. I'll link it in the Hangouts again. Um, but this version is really interesting because they are trying to emulate raw burgers, like a red burger that you cook and is red in the center, um, wow. which is super interesting. And apparently it's so realistic that like vegetarians would eat it and get disgusted because they thought they were eating beef kind of thing. Wow. Um, like that's how realistic it was. Um, you, know, you flame, you flame char it. Yeah, I, I guess that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you flame char it, and uh, you know it's still pink on the inside, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean the Impossible Burger, the the one point I guess is what they're calling the version. I'm not sure, but the one that I have, you know, going out and eating at like M Burger in River North, um, it, it it's so realistic that like I thought, oh, I'm getting a vegetarian based burger. It'll make me feel as good as a vegetarian meal would. And it's like, nope, it makes me feel like shit just like a beef burger would. So it's like mm. that's how realistic the product is. Wow. <laughs> I feel unhealthy eating it. Um <laughs> for better or worse. Um so yeah, I thought this was super interesting that they had um achieved this uh jay i think you were on was it both you and ashley the episode that i had gotten obsessed with um like the future of food and we talked about that um i was on or was it just yes, ashley i was on that episode oh it was you and ashley yeah. okay although everything is kind of overshadowed by me finding out that you have magnets in your fingertips you Wait, have what what your fingertip magnets oh no i have a singular f- okay we're gonna get into this now i'm sorry i, I just it's so cool but I have a like... singular magnet in one of my fingers. <laughs> Mike's like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> so it's background. Um, I, I'm I Magneto. Have a magnet. Yes, yeah, that's right. Ma- much. I'm actually Magneto. It's like way less cool than that, unfortunately. Um, I have a magnet in my finger because back in 2016, I had heard a podcast about um, uh, biomodding where people put like NFC chips and magnets in their body. Yeah. Um, and the NFC chip is for obvious reasons because you know you can open like a deadlock or a deadbolt. I mean, with a, like an NFC chip. But this, uh, the magnet, uh, the reason for the magnet is because when you put a magnet in somewhere like your finger that has a lot of nerves, um, uh, you can feel electromagnetic waves. Uh, and it's this weird like tactile. I, I don't want to call it a sixth sense because it's it's feeling. It's one of the five, but. <laughs> Um, whenever I get on the L, the, for, for you Texan, the L is the train here. Whenever I get on the CTA here, I can feel the third rail. Uh, I feel microwaves. I can feel live wires whenever I'm like in my computer or doing things that live wires are around. Um, yeah, I, you know, anything that there's like an electromagnetic field, I feel it when cars are started for some reason, I feel it. So I don't know what's going on there, but I feel that, um, so yeah, I have a magnet in my finger. How close uh, do you have to be to the car to feel the car starting? Like, I mean, like passenger or driver. Huh. Not in the back though. I don't feel it in the back. So like something's going on with like the motor and the key and the that I feel it. There's some sort of, uh, I guess um, it's like the battery is has something to do with how I don't understand how motors work, but <laughs> maybe there's electricity going on there. I have no idea. Yeah, when you first start it, there yeah there is. Yeah, right? So there you go. That's what I'm feeling. Um, that's the thing. That being said, I'm trying to get it out because I'm kind of over it and it's annoying when I go to lift. Um, and then like I have a lot of friends inviting me to like go rock climbing and I like I can't because I have a fucking magnet in my <laughs> finger that's going to like hurt because it's on the tip of my finger and also it healed such that um, like if I grab things really hard, it kind of pinches. Hmm. So I definitely can't rock climb. So in the near future, I'd like to get it out just so I can go rock climbing again. Um, Have you been electrocuted since you've installed it? 
No, no. And um, another thing people ask, so that nothing electricity related has happened to it. And another thing people ask is like, if it sets off like TSA and no, it, it's small. not. Yeah, it's too small. It's a little, like a little tiny cylinder in the tip of my right ring finger. Um, if you ever meet me in person, I'll let you touch it and be grossed out. Uh, <laughs> like everyone else's. <laughs> if I still have it. Uh, yeah, it's too small and too weak to like fuck up credit cards or hard drives or anything like that. Um, I do like sometimes feel metal, de- metal detectors and stuff, but, um, yeah, that's a thing. Wow. That's the thing that we're talking about in the podcast today as well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. If sorry. you want to feel electromagnetic waves, get a magnet in, put in your body by a body mod person. Uh, and so wait, the, where did you get this done in? I don't want to dwell on the subject, but. Are you done I mean, locally I here? I don't mind. No, I didn't do it here. I did it in uh, when I was visiting my mom. My mom lives in suburban New York, and I got it done by um, – so there's this web, website that's like kind of the unofficial website for these things called – what is it called? Un, I'm sorry. I'm going to look up. Hackmybody.org. Uh, biomagnet. They sell like, um, like not only the magnet but the – the god damn it what is the name of the website dangerous things.com i knew it was a funny url <clears throat> um, this, so they have uh like a map where they suggest certain body mod people that are like associated with them and these people are like pretty official at least in the body mod community um like they are very much about like being safe putting stuff in your body uh, like for for the better um and they have like nfc implants and magnet implants and whatnot um so these mm-hmm. folks have, you know, like a map that's like, you know, people we suggest. And there wasn't anyone in Chicago, but I was going back home to suburban New York to visit my mom. So I just got it done by some dude in Brooklyn who's like a body mod guy. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So it's like also a tattoo shop, but they do like body mod shit as well. And so I got that done there. Um, but yeah, that's a thing that people do. Uh People always are like, why the fuck would you do that? And it's like, I don't know. Because uh, I'm weird and like doing weird shit. It's fun though. Because <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a weird guy. What can I say? Um, it's been fun. It's been already, already a few years. I'm also kind of over it. It's been fun. I had it since January of 2016. And like while I was enjoying it then. Oh, oh God. No. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Look what your damn finger finger magnet did. That's right. <laughs> your finger, Megan. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> You're like yelling at your finger. Damn you. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> okay, I'm pouring. I don't know whose turn it is to count. Uh, yours. Uh, yours. It's my turn? <laughs> yes. So we're. this is number six? Yes, I think. Christ. Yeah, because we're at an hour ten. Yeah. Oh, look at me being a guy that takes shots. All right. <laughs> Are you all ready? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Salud. Thank you for ooh. damn that's that's good. Oh. Thank you for putting up with my finger magnet bullshit. Um yeah, it's a thing in my life. I if you're like super curious about it, I would say like much like a tattoo, let it let it sink in your mind for a little bit before you decide to do it. Um after a few years I'm kind of over it and I'm going to get a friend or my fiance's mother to take it out with a scalpel and some uh, is it ketamine? I forget what the no uh, lidocaine. That's what it is. Yeah, I was hoping not ketamine. Yeah, no, it's not Ket- ketamine. That's absolutely <laughs> the wrong drug. <laughs> One thousand percent the wrong drug. Yeah, when they when they put it in first, it was um, like tourniquet the finger, um, quick injection of lidocaine, and after like a few minutes, once the lidocaine takes, it's like slice it open in the tip, shove the magnet in. Um, and just uh, sew it shut. Cool. Um, I don't even think they sewed it shut. I think I don't remember if they sewed it shut or um, did super glue. But uh, super glue is also common for like small cuts. Incisions, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Anyway, I don't know. If you all have questions, feel free to ask. But I was going to try to move on. No, that's fine. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're grossed out enough by your finger. Thanks uh, for the story about your, you know, right hand ring finger. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to our suggested apps section. I have yet to come up with a soundboard sound for this. I will eventually. Uh, 
Uh, Mike, I'll have you start for the <clears throat> suggested apps. Yeah. So, oops, sorry. Uh, this week, um, playing with it's called Darkroom. So it's a universal app for iOS. So I mean, it works on your iPad, your iPhone. So on the iPhone, this is probably my favorite, uh, first favorite, or, or maybe second favorite app I use for editing photos. So I am someone who's big into mobile photography. I, I use my cell phone a lot to take photos, uh, both around of architecture and of just mm. family. So mm-hmm. uh, this is uh, from a universal app. It does support raw images, so you could shoot uh, in JPEG oh, or dope. raw. Uh, it does have kind of a very robust tool set. So you got the basic tools like the crop, the color, uh, the histogram, but then also it's got a lot of filters. You can edit the filters, create uh, uh, filters, you know, um, custom filters, and mm-hmm. it is integrated with the Moment series of lenses. So if you shoot, uh, have either one of you heard of Moment uh, lenses? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so if you if you shoot with Moment, uh, it is integrated with that. So you can actually just edit your photos right into uh, into this app. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is nice. So what I don't even know how to shoot raw on iPhone. Um, you can't do that with the default camera app. Can you, you cannot No, you would have to have an app that has raw support. Oh, uh, I didn't even know that existed here. Yeah. I am a, an enthusiast photographer and I did not know this was a thing. Is there a, so I guess second app from you. Do you suggest an app that can shoot raw per chance? So, uh, you could, you could either use Halide. Halide is uh, probably my, mm. my favorite uh, camera app. So um, H A L I D E. Yep, you're correct, and that's also okay. integrated with a Darkroom. Um, if not Halide, uh-huh. uh, the oh. moment the Moment app is very full featured as well. Okay. Got. Does the Moment also shoot RAW? It does. Yeah, they both shoot RAW. Uh, dude, I had no idea you can shoot RAW on iPhone. What? Yeah, yeah, you can shoot that's- RAW. I think for the last. Two two OSs, so since iOS ten. Mm. Yeah, so it's not a it's not a recent thing. You're teaching me something new. I had no idea. I'm over here, so I'm like enthusiast photographer. Like photography is what got me into design, and so I've it's been a constant in my life. Um, and I have a mirrorless camera. I have a DSLR. Whenever I travel, I take the mirrorless with me for sure. Um, and I tend to do desktop stuff. So now that I have the iPad Pro. Um, the the iPad Pro has been like awesome. I just got the the 10.5 from a friend who works at Apple for cheap. Um and I'm super into the iPad Pro in general. I have yet to edit photos on it I'm just cuz like like my workflow for photos has generally been um Mac based. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm looking for suggestions on like iOS based stuff just to play with the iPad. Uh, so this is definitely on my list. Um, I have installed Lightroom. How does this compare to Lightroom in your opinion? So I, well, I guess the, the first thing is that Lightroom is, a, I think it's a very bait. It's a, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it's free, but you have to have a subscription kind of get the full features of it. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you don't have the subscription, it's not really, I think, that valuable at app. There are still some cool features in there. Uh, this you pay for once, and you obviously get to use it for however as long as they, until they have the next upgrade. Um, gotcha. But there are more uh, – Lightroom is more robust in terms of uh, the number of features because it's Lightroom and it's Adobe's kind of uh, their wheelhouse. I think uh, yeah. Dark, Darkroom will eventually get there. Uh, but it's I think they're both great apps. Uh, they I think each have their own kind of uniqueness to them. Gotcha. I haven't played with Lightroom on mobile at all, or on iOS or Android at all. So I have I have no idea what the functionality is on iOS um, compared to Darkroom. But this looks super cool. How do you feel about the filters? Like, do you do you think they're pretty good? Yeah. So I, I like the filters. I think there is a good starting point uh, for a lot of the photos. Uh, I use which one do I use here? Let me because you can mark favorites as well. Oh, I, cool. Hold on one second. Oops. The reviews are really good too, so that's solid. Yeah. yeah, and it's an editor's choice app as well. Yeah, I don't. So for some mm. reason, my favorites are not syncing over for the. I think it's on my side though, but uh, you could mark. I think you mark filters as favorites. Okay. Uh, it's, it's very. I think it's it's a robust app. What's the price point? You said it was paid. Four ninety nine, if I'm not mistaken. And it's universal. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's great for like a solid photo editing app for sure. 
How does have you played with? Um, I haven't used it at all or looked at it, but have you played with Affinity Photo? Uh, I have, but it was probably about twelve months ago or about a year ago, and I haven't okay. seen. I haven't played with it since. Okay, I was just curious. I I am only now familiarizing myself with the options on iOS. Uh, so uh, definitely in the market for like a good app on ios that can edit photos just so like when i'm on vacation and i want to like go through oh. the photos i just took kind of edit them real quick yeah. okay this is definitely on on my list this is Here, cool i was mistaken it's actually free with in-app purchases and there's like four uh, there's, there's several in-app purchases depending on which tool set you want to get oh cool interesting this is super cool yeah i'm so i'm super into this this is on my list of like photo editing apps for sure so I'm in the market. Um, dope. Okay, Jaina, I'm going to let you go before me on the suggested apps. Okay. Go. Um, it, this is interesting because it's like literally the other side of <laughs> photography context. So um, do you remember like disposable cameras? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. There's still a thing for I mean, some reason. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah, for some reason. So there's this app that I found or someone told me about, and now I'm sort of obsessed with it because I'm nostalgic like that. And it's called Fuji, like Fuji, like Fujifilm, the disposable camera. Gotcha, yeah. And it takes photos the, the way that... For the listeners, that's H-U-J-I. Yes. Um, and it takes photos the way that disposable cameras used to take them. And by that, I mean you can set a date uh, in uh-huh. this app and it'll take a photo as if it's that year with the same like digital not digital uh disposable camera technology and then put a like a date stamp in the corner of the photo like it's you know being developed at a pharmacy or wherever you got it developed and yeah, yeah. i didn't <laughs> i didn't notice uh how like weirdly different they looked until i like took a photo uh, i like took a selfie on my just my regular phone camera and then I took one in Huji and they look so different. The way yeah. that things used to just kind of be this weird sort of reddish color in general on those photos and uh the way things look like they're moving even though they're not just it's it's mm-hmm. it's really like a fun nostalgic thing and I've just been playing with it. It's really cool and uh it just kind of reminds me of like, you know, that time. This is super fun. I like it. Yeah. Uh, like in talking about Lightroom in Lightroom on desktop, I have a bunch of like film emulating filters saved. Um, and this is super reminiscent of that shit. Although it's more reminiscent. I don't know if y'all will know what I'm talking about, but like, like photography nerds will know there's uh there was like back in the two thousands, there was this like huge obsession with Holga cameras, which are like these Mm -hmm. like Russian made, like super shitty cameras that like would let like light leak and stuff. And it was like, a certain aesthetic that people were going for. And I feel like this is similar, less yeah. shitty, but like a similar aesthetic of like, like older tech um, aesthetic with like your current tech with like your, the shit that's in your pocket now. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Hmm. So I'm just like Googling around the photos. Go for it, Mike. <laughs> Have you guys, uh, I'm not sure how long everyone's been on Instagram, but, like when Instagram first launched, this is what people used to upload. Oh, dude, hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah! Because I was I was using Instagram like I used to use Flickr to just like upload my photography. I still do, even though people use it as a social media platform. And like, <laughs> I remember in the beginning, yeah, it was like Mad Holga like type filters and shit. Uh, and people would, I mean, to this day, I still see filters on Instagram that are very much like this with like like extreme lens flare and like. Yeah. Super crazy. And I just love how there's like a tiny little viewfinder in the app and like you're, like you're actually going to put your eye up to your phone. But Oh, what? Just, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's kind of nostalgically adorable, I guess. And uh, it, I, I find that I like the way that some photos come out when they're like that rather than, you know, like true kind of, I don't know what the, the thing for not white, what the term for not white balanced is. Um, but like the way that they come out when I just take them on my phone. So yeah, yeah kind of cool. This looks fun. Interesting. Now if this shot raw, I would be like super into it. Oh my oh. God. 
It's like on my second monitor and I wasn't paying attention because I was looking at these photos. They're super cool. Okay, shit. I guess we have to take a shot. Yay! Yay! What Woo! shot is this? Seven? I yeah. guess so. How about we call this the last shot and we'll finish up with me. You can call it whatever you want. Shit. Okay. Um, I have no idea whose turn it is to count. Uh, is it Mike? Mike's? I was, yeah, I just went. Mike's. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Boom. Ooh, I've been. Woo, Jay! I noticed you were sipping on like champagne or some shit on the side. Yeah. Also, it's co- sort of like a chaser. Woof! I've been drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. Oh God, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's pretty nice. The champagne. Yeah. Um, I've been drinking mum for a while because I just got it. Got kind of got into. Mum. Yeah, it's like a Napa bubble. Like mum's mm. the word, like M U M. M U M M. Oh. Yeah, so I got into that, and they have like this rosé bubble that's kind of good. So, um, it's another one of their brands. It's not bad. Fair enough. I mean, like I'm super into champagne and wines and bubbly in general. Yeah, I'm. Um, I, I love wine. Or like prosecco, man. Prosecco is like the cheap champagne. Prosecco is amazing. Shit, that shit is good. Um, I guess we'll talk about my app since we're done talking about. Are you good on Huji? Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Listeners, regular listeners will know that I m- meant in December to post video episodes that I didn't post. It was because of technical problems. Um, but now that I'm over those technical problems, I am editing those videos on my iPad, which is awesome, with this program, or I should say app, uh, this app called Luma Fusion. And um, those of you who have iPad Pros or just iPads in general might be aware of this app. Um, it's super fucking cool. It's available for both. It's not just iPad. It's iOS in general. But um, I would recommend not using it on iPhone just because there's a lot going on in the interface. And using it on an iPhone might be crowded. Um, but for for video editing, I find it to be like super, super powerful for for an iPad. Like going from what I expected uh, for an iPad, like this is super super great. So, um, it's for basic editing. Like you can make cuts, you can make, uh, you know, like speed changes and whatnot. Um, you can make, uh, let's see, it's like speed changes. Um, the level of like the decibels on the audio. Um, and then there's like certain like dynamic processing on the audio and then there's certain processing on the video. Um, you know, you get like certain animations and certain filters that you can use and, you know, it's not as powerful as Premiere or Final Cut Pro might be, but for something on the iPad where, like, I want to sit down and just cut a bunch of video um, and try to, like, you know, get through this hour and a half that we were building Nintendo Labo that I'm trying to post. Um, hmm. uh, it's a good way to get through the video and it's a good way to edit it. And I'm genuinely surprised at how well it like scrubs through the video which you know even on like a decent computer um might be somewhat laggy but on an ipad it scrubs just fine um for those for those of you that don't know what scrubbing means, scrubbing is like when you scroll through the video and you see it like render um it renders fine and i'm genuinely like super surprised um yeah i, I don't know what else to say about it it's it's super great um overall mike i just saw you link something yeah so there's a one of the youtubers uh his name is jonathan morrison and he goes through oh his yeah work, i don't know if you've seen the video before but he goes through his workflow sorry his workflow of editing an entire video on an ipad pro using luma fusion oh yeah i was i think i started watching this video and then i did not finish it yeah so i, I feel I, like i should just to familiarize myself I, I own the app, but I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't have that much time to sit to play with it. What, right. what kind of uh, didn't make immediate sense or wasn't really clear to me is the process of getting content or you know clips onto your iPad. I use the I imported all my clips from an iCloud Drive. I don't know what, how you did it, but that's mm-hmm. the that just seemed to get too long. Yeah, I did it from another cloud drive. I did it from uh, just because I have. <laughs> Uh, 
I have OneDrive just because I needed Microsoft Office for like cover letters and stuff, but um, you know, terabyte for free. And so I on OneDrive is where I store all my cloud stuff. And I was downloading it from the cloud. And yeah, it took a minute to download, which is somewhat annoying. Yeah. I wish it, it would be able to access that faster, but it's downloading it locally. And I guess that's why it scrubs so fast. Um, it's because it, you know, once it downloads it locally, it can render quickly. Um, I'm still genuinely impressed by that, but, um, yeah, the download speeds were not good. <laughs> yeah. Like there's some hardware solutions that you can, you can purchase to, uh, to get your content off the SD mm-hmm. card or off the media card, and then it'll stream them from that uh, hardware solution to your iPad. But that's like an extra couple hundred bucks. And if I want to try the app, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, and my, like my solution is all cloud based for the most part. So I, like I don't mind like trying to download it real quick and like going to do other stuff and then coming back. Um, mm, okay. Um, but yeah, if you're waiting, if you're trying to download it right then and there, it's a pain in the ass. Totally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That is, that is a pain in the ass. I will admit that much. Um, but generally I'm like super impressed by the app. Like in terms of what is capable on an iPad pro, I was not aware of this before. Cause this is my first iPad pro. Like what is capable like video editing wise with Luma fusion is wild. Um, it's super cool. Go, you, what were you going to say? Have you tried Adobe rush or Adobe, uh, premier clips? So I've seen rush and rush. I don't even I, I'm not sure what Rush is. I saw it in the, in the Creative Cloud. And then Premiere Clips, I don't even, I haven't heard of that. What's that? I think, so I think Adobe launched uh, an iPad version. It's called mm-hmm. Adobe Premiere Clips. Adobe Premiere. I might be misquoting the name of the app. It's Clips. Yeah, uh, Adobe Premiere Clip. Sorry, not Clips, plural. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it allows mm-hmm. you... Uh, so I've never used it. I, 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 I don't have an Adobe subscription. I use Final Cut. Gotcha. Uh, I was wondering if you had seen it, but it sounds like you're not familiar with it. No, so no. It looks like it's just so, some kind of scaled down version of editing on Creative Cloud. On your gotcha. iPad. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Uh, this one looks interesting too. I have to check this out for sure. Huh. Okay. Yeah, totally. Okay. I'll definitely check this one out. Um, but generally I, yeah, I'm impressed with how LumaFusion just handles, um, you know, handles the files, how it renders. Um, it's been really solid. I'm just impressed with like both the iPad pro and LumaFusion, to be honest just in general, um, it's, it's able to tackle more than I thought it was like, never would I thought I could, I could render video that well on an iPad. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just some shit that like never occurred to me. I thought I needed like a beefy graphics card to be able to render that shit. Well, um, it's, it's, it's so weird to, to think about an iPad that way. (laughs) Um, yeah, but I guess I got to start thinking about it that way. Gina, do you have a tablet? Jay, you there? Jay? Rap? She left. Yeah. Jay! Yep. (laughs) Sorry. Shake a lot. (laughs) Funk was like pawing at the door, so I got up to let him in, and then he wanted to get Uh, back out, and I was like, come on, boy. (laughs) Okay. Do you do anything on a tablet at all, or? Um, I, you remember that book I wrote? (laughs) Oh, yes. The one that's in my Kindle library that I haven't read yet? Um, Oh yeah, thanks for sh- thanks for buying. Um, <laughs> mostly just mostly just publishing stuff. Um, I'm, I okay. haven't really gotten into photography, but I I have um, a Samsung Galaxy Tab, an iPad, and hmm. um, an Amazon uh, Kindle hmm. that I use to just like test out before I you know publish, um, and then you know just formatting stuff on. Um, on iPads for, you know, readers, but not really photography. And I kind of have to trust when I get um, images from designers because I have no idea, (laughs) like, how it's going to work. So this has been educational. Gotcha. Yeah, I know you're very, like, publishing, writing-oriented in general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, on that note, I think (laughs) it's a good place to end the podcast. So thank y'all for coming. Um, Thank you. 
So, Mike, remind everyone where it is that they can find you. Yep. So it is YouTube.com slash Tech247TV and or, or just Tech247.TV on the web. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Mike has done – is it a group of y'all or is it just you? Because you have been in all the videos and you do a good job of uh, – of uh like reviewing and uh i don't know yeah reviewing i guess is the word uh, <laughs> like all the videos i've seen and all the products i've seen on your channel yep so it's just one man show there's uh sometimes gotcha. laura's in the background uh telling me to do things uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise it's just me yeah okay gotcha totally um cool and then jay where are you here from uh, I am here from the Pretty Witty Podcast. You can find us at theprettywitty.com um, and also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything but MySpace because nobody uses that anymore at prettywitty.com. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake apparently still uses it. It's That's like a music streaming sad. service. Sad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, maybe I'll go back on. Yeah, I mean, he's there. <laughs> Yeah, you know where you can find us is at Tech Helicast. You can find me yelling at conservatives on Twitter at Daniels a nerd. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. Peace. Bye. 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 We can stop recording. Instead of forgetting and letting them do the setting like sediment, I'm that part. Mix it up with six guy rage against machine, bit of J Rock, K. Switch it up, gangsta. Get in on my stage props, still with the beats and catch me singing like a. As always, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Tech Kila. Mama call me Yeshua, running out of time with the Harry Potter head scar. I ain't got a desk job. For the regular listeners, I'd like to thank you for your support and ask that you please help us to continue to improve the show by heading over to our Patreon page and donating a dollar a month. Head farts, yeah, that's for all you gum smack, mud flaps, guzz back, unwrap sex By donating just a dollar a month, you'll really be helping us out, and you'll get Tequila closer to hitting our goal of $30 per month. Yeah, this is how I rap before I hit it up. Top shit, but I still respect women. Once that goal is reached, I personally will be designing and sending each of you a tequila branded shot glass or two to show my appreciation. So head over to patreon.com slash tequila to support the show. That's patreon, which is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash tequila. Like egregious kids suggest in front and like you Jesus and elitist pimps come from Mars and bitches come from Venus. The way I see us is my strength is all your weakness. Treat them like a hedonist. Every obstacle defeated. Preach it, I'm a seed of weed. Remember, you can submit topics for the show and interact with me and guests on the subreddit, which is found at reddit.com slash r slash tequila. That's for all your Joe rap, smoke ploys. <laughs> That's for all your go rag, no half, low grab. Oh, so you can follow Tequila on Twitter for the latest hot takes on tech news at Tequila Cast. Watch list, that did it. Yeah, this is how I rap before I hit it. Uh, talk shit, but I still respect women. The Tequila theme song is Ride Out by Yeshua, which is spelled Y-S-H-W-A. You can also find it online as Vincent Augustus. Thanks, y'all. Ride out. They ain't praising my same, my miracle. They ain't praising my same, my miracle. They ain't praising my same, my miracle. They ain't praising my same, my miracle.